For it must needs be that there is an opposition in all things. But father, why? If not so, righteousness could not be brought to pass. Neither wickedness, neither holiness nor misery, neither good nor bad. Hey, so one thing I love about the Book of Mormon is on top of all these moving, profound spiritual insights, you've even got the groundwork of these little logical arguments. But if you're struggling with the idea that God even exists or that you should believe in him from a logic standpoint, you can find them here. One of these is made by Lehi himself, and we'll talk about it right now. So here, Lehi talks about opposing concepts and how they contrast against each other and highlight their differences. Without that differentiation, everything would be one big blob and we wouldn't be able to choose between concepts. I don't see gender and I don't see sex. I just see people. You don't see how men and women look different? No, I just see like shapeless blobs walking around. And these blobs would eliminate purpose and purpose is one of the keys to our existence. As we both know, without purpose, we would not exist. It is purpose that created us. Purpose that connects us. Purpose that pulls us, that guides us, that drives us. It is purpose that defines Purpose that binds us. So anything with a purpose has a creator. So if your life has a purpose, then your life has. But hey, Could you say we make our purpose here? Okay, if what you say is imaginary. An eternal purpose isn't something you have to make up. You're already part of an eternal plan. You're a main character in a story larger than yourself, which exists outside of your mind. Anything with a purpose can help us measure good or bad relative to that purpose. For example, the game of basketball has a purpose or a goal, and we use that purpose or goal to help us measure who's good or bad at basketball. Without those purposes or goals... Everybody's good at basketball, or everybody's bad at basketball, and we're back to the blobs. So, once you know that your life has a purpose, you can also tell... Spoiler alert, the game of basketball also has a creator. But wait, couldn't atheists be great at this? Sure, just ask which purpose they service. So here Lehi closes the loop by explaining, Becoming our best selves depends upon our ability to obey moral law, derived from eternal purposes bestowed upon us by our eternal creator. Anything short of eternal is going to be something arbitrary and imaginary that we've made up along the way. From those things. Okay, so if you start with them. Yes, if you start. So you're not skeptical about those claims. Wow. Well, I'm asking. You know, I came out and said that I wasn't going to be trying to straw man you left and right. (laughs) And now every time I say something... You're like, oh, so you're not skeptical about that. Well, I'm trying to I haven't, I no, haven't no, gotten No, sorry, to. I'm not trying to attack you. I'm trying to understand where your argument begins. Well, it's not an epistemological problem. It's an ontological problem. It's not how we know what good and bad behavior is. It's, it's how do you define what good and bad behavior is in the absence of God? How do you discover what good is? Remember, if there's no purpose to the game, you can't say that, oh, this play will is a better play than this other play. This behavior is a better behavior than another behavior if there's no purpose to life. Understood. And there is no purpose to life on on Harris's atheistic, materialistic worldview. So the problem isn't that atheists can't be good people because they can. There's lots of good, moral, atheist people out there. The problem is that atheism can't answer or define morality in any sort of way that's objective. And that might be because objective is another word for purpose. So here's a more concise look at the statements Lehi makes to argue for God's existence and excellence as well as centrality in our existence. If you try to negate one, then people are going to question your contact with reality. I beheld on the other side of the river of water a great and spacious building, and it stood as it were in the air, high above the earth. So this is the toughest part of Lehi's dream because it reminds you that people who actively try to lead you away from God's love have no foundational argument or basis for doing so. Why are you so afraid of subjective moral reasoning? I mean, do you think that we're all just going to start pillaging just because we don't have a book to tell us what to do? I mean, are you afraid of that? Like, I'm not because that's not going to happen. And that, yeah, not 
the bat, but there were Christian Nazis, there were atheist Nazis. So I don't see, what are you so afraid of? Do you lock your door at night? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> sure. I love the Book of Mormon because on top of all the spiritual relevant information that can help you create a better life for yourself and others, it's also got these little logical nuggets that help you understand and rationalize why belief in God and following Jesus Christ is totally logical. And that's another reason why I love the Book of Mormon.